Welcome to the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast and the Lemoulin I was going to say preview show, but that was last <laughs> week. You can go on to eventingpodcast.com and listen if you like. Review show. Um, because it was the third five star of the year this weekend in Germany. And it was quite the conclusion to a brilliant few weeks for a certain man called Tim Price. We will come on to that in just a second. But bringing us an update, I want to say live from a lorry somewhere in the United Kingdom, paint that picture in your head as you wish, is Sam Watson, who was on the ground all weekend in the storm, in the rain. He is basically going to sum up Le Moulin for us. Hello, Eventing Podcast. Uh, Le Moulin Review. I can just about speak still. I'm currently in the middle of the UK, having driven back uh, through the night from... Le Moulin to get this far and we're just resting up and letting the horse rest up before we kick on back to Ireland. So uh, a good chance for me to reflect. Sorry, I don't have a guest with me this time, but I did bring you the eventual Le Moulin winner in Tim Price in my preview report. So I think I've done a good enough job there. And yet Tim Price is going to, um, I'm sure you guys are going to cover him in detail, but a huge performance particularly um, the the dressage phase has become so solid with these two, another 25 on the board like he, like he had done in Poe in his other five-star last year. Um, Tim, cross-country, he's he's just a, a genius. I don't think a M is particularly at this point in her career the, the fastest uh, horse, but he's he coaxed her around and done a fantastic job there. And then leaving all the show jumps up, the time penalties were interesting. In the end, Zagreb and Alexander Bragg, uh, a horse who I thought had a good chance here. Their pull cost them because of Tim's time penalties in the show jumping. Now, whether that would have played out um, had Alex not had the, the fence down, maybe maybe Tim knew he had some time up his sleeve and that was a, a strategic or a tactical move. But uh, it made Alex was pretty disappointed to have had his rail, but it was a huge week for Zagreb as well uh, to finish third. And in second place, Tom McEwen and Figaro Van Het Brooksoff. They climbed from 11th after dressage, and uh, I thought you guys on the preview show really nailed a lot of these contenders. They did pretty much exactly what, what you thought. So um, he was the closest, really, to an FOD, finishing on his dressage score. Um, as... I think, Nicole, you said he could be. So um, great shout from you guys. It, it was a it was a high-quality podium, actually. Those horses have been putting in good results uh, all over the place. Figaro, in particular, has had a serious CB. And then, obviously, the a lot of the, the Tattersalls form holding up there with Ascona N and Zagreb. The disappointment has to be your dressage leader, Kazuma Tomoto, Brook Park Vikenti. He was gutted to crash out. Uh, on the on the cross country, not crash out, but to to drop out of the competition in that phase. I thought being there on the ground, the course was um, it was good. It was it was tricky. Um, it doesn't walk as big as a Burley or Babington, but it is quite intense, really, with um, with question after question. And that that has a kind of a mental stamina sapping effect, and so it should. You know, it's a it's a five star. It should be a proper day at the office for horses and riders. I thought I thought Paul Langbrocker looked great all week. Uh, very close to going into the twenties uh, in the dressage. Just one mistake at the end of the test, costing them, and then just leaked a couple of time penalties and had that one rail as well. But actually, the way she looked. Um, she could have given the the leaders really something to think about. Um, she looked great in all three phases. Chatwin, possibly the most impressive horse I've seen in a long time. Um, went on to finish fourth, still only an eleven year old. Um, just seriously impressed. Uh, looking at him through the final water, having set off really really quickly Frankie on her five star debut was determined to give this a go and it's, it's a huge result to finish fourth on your on your five star debut but uh, 
uh, and and it's got you got to give the the rider an awful lot of credit for producing the horse to this level and and making it want to do the job as much as it does but that is a seriously impressive horse chatwin is definitely one to keep an eye out for in the future and then i would just say a quick mention for sarah bullimore as well two really solid results at compier and rev de rue as well finishing well inside the the top 10 and going she's going to get some valuable world ranking points and um she's she's done a great job as well that folks i think is my roundup can i give you any other wisdom or insight i don't think i can there was an awful lot of rain on saturday the place drains incredibly well um it's pretty ridiculous to be honest oh one little insight i just see his name as i scan down the leaderboard he was very close to me actually after the dressage phase peter flarop and frankie were clear inside the time on cross country produced possibly the round of the day cross country looked brilliant there was something in my mind telling me that this was not a fluke and then it, it came to me as i was driving home a horse called silver ray written also ridden by peter flarop if you go back to poe 2010 you will see a typical Me- Michelet the Menace cross-country scorecard where only one person made the time. Um, there were a lot of jumping penalties, an awful lot of time penalties. William Fox Pitt was second fastest, I think, with Navigator on 3.6 time penalties. The only person to make the time was Peter Flarup with Silver Ray. So this man is a very, very good cross-country rider coming from Denmark. You shouldn't have been surprised if you were a real top class high class in-depth eventing nerd you would have possibly expected that from peter so um he deserves his accolade and and should actually be really hailed as as quite a cross-country pilot so there you go a little bit of knowledge as always a gem coming from me I, i'm i am sleep deprived folks i'm uh, i'm just going to sign off enjoy the show Basically, I feel like we don't we we don't necessarily need to carry on talking about Lemoulin. Sam's basically done it. He yeah. has. I, I'm a little concerned. I hope he's okay, and he hasn't hurt hurt, hurt his arm too too much, patting himself on the back there. But um, other than that, he's done a really good job. He he pretty much covered every base, Jenny. Yeah, he really did. I thought, uh, good job, team. We really nailed it in that preview show. We mentioned all of the horses in the top seven, I believe. Yes, I think actually, to be fair, that's probably one of the first times on a preview show at a five star that we've actually got the first seven all mentioned. Normally, there's a wild card in there somewhere that we've we've missed. But yeah, hats off because it was a very, very good shout by everybody. Can we talk about our highlights? And it probably starts with Tim Price, let's go to M, who repeated history of 2014 when he won Tattersall's and went on to win Le Moulin. With Wesco in 2014, he's done it this year with Escona M. But the mare actually, Jenny, I know you've been a fan of her for a while, looked to be very confident at the level. Oh my gosh, she just oozes confidence, doesn't she? And definitely was very opinionated, <laughs> uh, I think we could say, especially in how she goes cross country. Definitely made some of her own decisions there. But I mean, that's what you want in a really bold cross-country horse who's going to go around and win five stars so I think it's such an exciting horse for the future only 11 she's just barely scratching the surface of what we're going to see in the future so I think this is a great combination these two together I'm definitely excited that I put up the winner I know a lot of people are rooting for them to win so go Tim and this now puts him at three wins to Janelle's Two. two wins so price wars continue price wars uh bring on where's the next five star Burley is the next five star early? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's yep. right. Just double checking. Um, I w- well, she might take classic Moe to Burley. Could be mm-hmm. all on again. And Tim, the defending mm-hmm. champion. Oh, watch this space. Uh, I have to admit, I was pretty impressed with Tom McEwen and Figaro Van Hetbrooksoff, who finished in second behind Tim Price and Escona M, moved up from 11th after dressage. Scored 32.3 in the first phase and were closer than anybody else in the field to finishing on their dressage score. Nobody did it. Tom added just 1.2 time penalties from the show jumping. Now, this horse is actually in incredible form. Won Belton earlier on this year. Hasn't been outside of the top four, I don't think, in any of his runs, in any of his last five runs or something with Tom. He's 
just been really consistent in all three phases. And actually, Kieran, from a five-star horse, a horse that you can really rely on to be so consistent in all three phases must make your job so much easier. Yeah, I'd say Tom is chuffed with the way the horse ran over the weekend. Um, it's quite interesting because the two the two guys that finished first and second, we discussed, you know, like we talked a good bit about both of their show jumping before the event. And both of them went in and jumped clear rounds in terms of the poles, had a few time faults, really interesting. Tim's time faults in particular on Ascona M were really, really interesting because 3.6 time, it was either an incredibly measured round or an incredibly measured round. He he obviously made a decision that, you know, he was going to jump a clear round and have some time faults and he was going to run the risk that if he rubbed a rail with his time faults, that was that. Um, and fair play to him. Like he cut it as close as he could have. Tom, I thought he did a brilliant job with that horse. Um, added only 1.2. Very, very good overall run. Alex on Zagreb, you know, broke my heart. This maybe was the one. One rail down. I think he had a fence down that was what was had very little as well. Fence 11, I think it was in the show gentlemen. I don't think it was one of the inverted commas bogey fences. It wasn't the combination. Um, yeah, felt for him. Yeah, got in. Uh, and it would have been really interesting to see, as Sam says, how that would have played out if he'd have jumped clear to put the pressure on Tim, wouldn't have been able to afford to have those 3.6 time faults and therefore would have had to have gone that little bit quicker. And maybe that would have made a mistake. I don't know. We'll, we will never know. But behind the top three, in fourth place, Frankie Terriot Stutes and Chatwin, who, Jenny, we spoke about on the preview pod. Now, We've done a little piece, or Egg Ratings have done a little piece, I should say. The Royal We, I didn't post it by any means. But on US finishes at five-star level in recent years outside of Kentucky, and she is well up there. Yeah, this is our best one since Lou Moulin in 2017, when Marilyn Little and RF Scandalous also finished fourth. So, I mean, what an impressive debut, not just her five-star debut, but also her debut of competing in Europe. So a lot of pressure. This is the only horse that she competes. She's an amateur, a mother of two, wild little boy. She runs multiple businesses. She's just kind of an all-around rock star. And we're just so incredibly proud of the way she rode. And I'm really excited that everyone overseas has finally gotten the chance to see Chatwin. This is a horse that she has produced through the levels. And as you heard Sam say in his Lumulin review, it is an extremely exciting horse. And just 11. There are going to be many more five stars in their future. And honestly, if you look at his record, there's only once that he's finished outside of the top five at all levels. I mean, he has seven wins on his international record he's just so impressive and now for them to put this dominant result on paper in Europe that's a big shout do you think we'll see them come back over to Europe at some point fairly soon Jenny do you think they'll come over for yes another big event over here she's definitely looking at coming back over in the fall so still looking at what the plan is going to be but you will definitely be seeing much more of them so Remember the name. Remember the name. Frankie Terriot Stutes and Chatwin. I actually, you can tell how much Sam liked this horse. And she really has done a brilliant job. Only horse, as we said on the preview pod, to win two long format four stars last season at both Fair Hill. And where was the other one, Jenny? At Rebecca Farm in Montana. Rebecca Farm. That was it. Um, anybody else in the five star that caught your eye? Sam Watson? Top 12 finish, Telebeg Flamenco on the horse's five-star debut. Good result for him. And who else do we want to talk about? Kaya 44, Yoshiaki, Iowa in sixth. Yeah, thought that looked class. Bummer to have that rail down in the triple combination. But this horse continues to put up really strong results. And Pauling Braca as well with Sam Griffiths. We discussed the fact that this probably wasn't going to be the type of cross-country course that suited her, did end up picking up those 3.2 time penalties and unfortunately also having the rail down with two time penalties. But you can't help but love her. I mean, 16 years old, she looks fantastic. So I'm a huge fan of this mare and another solid top 10 result now on her record. 
And I would actually do another shout out, as Sam said, Reb Durue and Sarah Bullimore, who were fifth. And that horse is just getting better and better as he gets older. Has the most remarkable FEI record and has completed all five stars over this side of the world. So the only one he hasn't done is Adelaide. He's really quite incredible. Um, And as I say, just getting better and better. Okay, German National Championships. We spoke a lot on the preview podcast about how Julia Krajewski, Samuel Edito, Kieran, you I think you put her in her own class and she was I on did, three yeah. spots at the podium. Um, yeah, and basically, that's, the rest of the field yeah, wish that's what happened. A bit, if I'm being brutally honest, a little bit closer than I thought it was going to be. And that's no, that's not a reflection on Julia. She She performed brilliantly in all three phases, but... Ingrid Klimke <laughs> turned up on an eight-year-old and uh, ran very, very close. Mm-hmm. And definitely an improvement in Asha P's show jumping form at Houghton in her debut at the level. She had two rails down and I thought jumped just a fantastic round. So definitely pushed Julia the whole way. And actually by close, I mean, it was as close as it could have got. 24.7 is what Julia won on. 24.8 is what Asha P finished second on and I think this would be a moment to actually give Julia quite a bit of credit because she was under pressure she was the defending champion everybody said they thought that she was going to win going into this she should win doing handstands and she went into that show jumping knowing that she sat on a very good jumper which just adds to the pressure a little bit more and also knowing that she could not afford even a time penalty so hats off to her because actually it was a very very impressive performance under pressure yeah it was what I what I thought was quite interesting about her show jumping was she had the second fastest clear round in the show jumping. Now that it doesn't make any difference, you know, in terms of the score, but as a rider, you have to be in a in a certain mind frame and sitting on something you really trust, you know, to go and turn back on those slightly tighter turns and take a stride out when you know out of a turn when you feel you can. And the only horse that was a touch faster was the jumping machine that is. Mm-hmm. Vasily, which I think is quite an interesting one for Julia because she obviously went in there. There was no hint of nerves, no hint of, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'll add up a stride out of this turn or I'm going to wait on this distance. She just went in and just jumped around her clear round, you know, kind of eyes closed stuff. So bodes very, very well for her for the rest of the season that she's that comfortable going in to just pop around a clear round. Yeah, absolutely. And she said in her interview after the show jumping that there was no other horse she would rather be sitting on if she was only leading by 0.1 penalties going into it. And she also said that he loves this venue and he just kind of knows that this is his turf and where he dominates. And I looked at their record at just Lumulin in seven appearances at the venue. He's never finished outside of the top five at any level, of course, won the five star there in 2017 and now back to back German national championships. So I was delighted to see them take the wire to wire win. He looked fantastic. He's actually, he's got a huge amount of experience, hasn't he? Because he's only 13, but he's been third in the five-star at Le Moulin. He's won the five-star at Le Moulin. He's won Bukalo. He has been to two different championships. Admittedly, didn't go to plan, but he's still got a lot of mileage left in him. And yet you feel like he's been around for quite a while. Yep. He's definitely going to be going to more championships in the future, could we say? I think we can say that. And he's also been named. So the German team have named or the German Federation have named their sort of group of of riders that are planning to take to the Europeans and to Aachen. And he is named in both of those. And actually worth noting that Samuel Edito doesn't have his Olympic qualification yet at long format this season. So he needs to do a long format this year. Could well be those European championships back in Le Moulin. That'd be class to see him there for what it's worth. I think that would be... Really, really, it'd be really probably nice for Julia to be there in on that venue for that championships yeah. and for the horse as well. You know, like like she said, he knows that place. He won't know it's a championships. He just knows he's back there. Um, that will give her a certain amount of confidence given, you know, how well she runs there. So, yeah, it'd be, that would be really, really interesting to watch her there. I mean, she, you'd have to say she's favourite for it, but it'd be, you know, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a different calibre of, of competition. I feel like a home championships in Le Moulin, the Germans are going to seriously serve it up to the rest of Europe. 
mm-hmm. um, I, I can't, going to be very I can't tough wait to for, for what it's worth. <laughs> I can't wait to, to watch it, to see it, to see how it plays out because I heard somewhere that Mikey uh, is planning on turning the cross country around and running it the other way. Okay. Uh, yeah, which would be really interesting. It just would be really interesting to see how that worked and, you know, what sort of questions he has up his sleeve. Um, as Sam as Sam alluded to in his um, review, it's not it's not the biggest cross country in the world. You know, when you when you walk it, it's not massive, but what it, 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 it it's a funny place because you're kind of in and out of trees, and yet you're then you're out in kind of the middle of a field as well randomly, and he uses that very well. So I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing what that European Championships throws up. The Europeans actually fall the week before Burley this year as well. Um, so the week after Mill Street, when the Event Rider Masters comes to Ireland and the week before Burley. So we will no doubt be getting some breaking news on squads being released in the coming weeks. And Jenny, I know that you are literally refreshing your computer <laughs> screen every 0.5 of a second mm-hmm. because you're waiting with bated breath for yes. the Pan American Games US team to be announced, which is today. Yes, the journalist crossed to bear, constantly refreshing the press release page. Refresh, refresh, <laughs> refresh. Um, before we before we head away from Le Moulin, uh, I do think that it would be remiss of us not to mention a couple of other performances, notably that of Andrew Hoy, Vasily de Lassos, who was 17th after dressage, 31.8. I was a little bit disappointed because I was hoping that they would have been in hitting hitting the 20s a little bit more this spring because he is so so competitive I mean imagine if he was scoring the mid 20s nobody would ever beat him because he just never adds to it he's remarkable I don't think we can quite don't despair don't despair he's close he's He's close close. there's time there's time only 10 well he is he's a third he's a 31.8 in uh in the German national championships and Michael Young was on a 28.3 and Andrew was 17th after dressage and Michael was 7th. So he's it, he, he needs to find a couple of marks for you and then you're going to be laughing all the way to the bank. Mm. I think he if he's in the 20s anywhere, then he is definitely going to be a serious, serious horse. I would love to see this horse at five star again um, doing one of the big five stars. But I know that Andrew was very much aiming him for Tokyo and for championships. And it'll be interesting to see them their plans for the rest of the season because this is another horse that again needs a long format qualification for Tokyo so where will he take him um Michael Young had a couple of very good rides highlighter who you may not have heard of was sixth and again Corazon just outside the top 10 as well in 12th so he has it well he seems to be really rebuilding his string he's perhaps not got his big superstars of WS Satik Sam and Rakana out at the moment but I think Jenny did you say I think you put it in the flick group, actually, that mm-hmm. Fisher Takanu is making a comeback. Yes, and uh, Fisher Rakana is also back in work, jumping. So we will see her soon, hopefully. I can't wait to see them. It'll be yeah. brilliant to have them back out because Fisher Takanu, it's hard to kind of... We, we haven't seen him for quite a while, but he won the Europeans at Blair Castle in 2015 and did it so impressively. Yeah, and it's so it's exciting to have those big guns coming back out for him. Also, these young ones, definitely ones to keep an eye on. Highlighter was actually in third place after the cross country, unfortunately had two rails down in the show jumping. But I think that one's definitely going to be one to keep an eye on for sure. Okay. Well, before we wrap up the Lemoulin Review Show, should we go with a little breaking echo ratings stat? All right, let's do it. I feel like we need a drum roll. Kieran, can you do a drum roll? <laughs> How was that? Um, that was great. Yeah, no, that was very good. Okay, so the breaking stat would be... We need to work on this. We, we need to work yeah, on this. Yeah, we need to work on this. Me for, if you ask me for a drum roll, you then have to come in with the breaking stat. Like <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> should we, should we go again? You do your drum roll. I'll do the breaking stat. Okay, tell me when. When. Yoshiaki Iowa, Kaya 44, record the best Japanese five star result in history at Le Moulin this weekend, beating Yoshi's previous best with the Duke of Cavan Badminton 2017. Dun dun dun. Yeah, this is actually great to 
give a little bit of time on this episode to Japan Watch because there are some seriously exciting things going on. It's unfortunate for Brook Park Bikenti to have those mistakes on the cross country, but that was the second best dressage test from a Japanese rider at five star level. Uh, 25.2, only behind Yoshi and Duke of Cabinet Badminton on 24.9. So that was definitely exciting. And then Yoshi also was in the top five in the four star with Bart. He's so, in such good form. Strong. The Japanese yep. are in brilliant form, but seriously, I mean, he's got a lot of very good horsepower. Mm -hmm. I I just feel like they are building, building a lot of momentum as we head in towards Tokyo 2020 and it would just be amazing we're we gonna do we're we gonna do a Japanese eventing episode we've got to do it we talk yeah. about them so much we're gonna yep. break it down for you listeners and we're gonna talk about who has what what they've got qualified what they need to get qualified and if you are a fan of Japanese eventing then it will be just the episode for you uh, so we will do that for you very soon I promise um but guys we probably ought to let our lovely listeners go We've got lots going on this week. RVL Event Rider Masters. The preview episode for RVL will be out on Wednesday. So hopefully you'll have listened to the Lemoulin review before then. And we will be back very soon. But Jenny, go and refresh. Kieran, go and enjoy your wine and crackers, which Thank you. in the summer you were telling me before we started recording, amidst the cheese. <laughs> I miss the cheese. I miss the cheese. Yeah, it doesn't sound quite as enticing. The wine bit, obviously brilliant. Um, listeners, get involved. Join us on all social media. You know the drill. We'll see you on the Flick app. And we'll be back very soon with another episode of the Eco Ratings Eventing Podcast.